video. So here we're in Chile, starting the first project. K31. By Mundo. By Mundo. Here we go. Scarifying the soil, opening the first step, as you know. All right, this is going to be kind of a long video um, because we want to uh, showcase uh, step by step uh, what it entails to build uh, a road using uh, soil stabilization. From step one to the end and then uh, some testing of the results. So the first thing we do, as you can see here in the video, is scarify open the soil. In order to make this easier, um, I don't know if you noticed the, the water truck in front, it's always better to wet the, the, the road uh, just a little bit um, to make it easier for the, for the motor grader uh, to be able to open it with the scarifier. If not, you're gonna be uh, sprouting dust all over the place and, and it's gonna get nasty real, real fast. Also, um, this allows the, the, the work to go faster and not having to go back and forth so many times. You will notice that I would say 70 to 75% of building a road using soil stabilization will be spent on the, the prepping of, of, of the soil, in other words, like you see in the video, opening the soil, uh, if a portion of the road has really bad soil or you need to raise the level, then you you, know, you need to bring a, a truck of, you know, laterite and then incorporate it into the soil. So most of your time is gonna be spent uh, uh, prepping the road before you even stabilize. The stabilization part is maybe 20, 25% of the work. Um, after you, uh, open the soil with the motor grader. Um, you go ahead and run uh, a tiller. In this case, they had a, a rotary tiller, uh, vertical, but you can use a regular tiller, it doesn't really matter. Um, this one's just wider. And then what it does is it allows you to, to uh, chip the soil into smaller particles, which it'll make it easier later when it comes time to stabilize and get a consistent mix. Like I mentioned earlier, now um, this particular uh, uh, portion of the road, they needed to raise the level in order to get proper uh, water drainage. And also the soil in that area wasn't that great. So um, we brought in some uh, uh, laterite. Uh, it's um, low plasticity laterite, maybe about 10, 12%, which is the ideal soil, soil that you wanna be working with when you're stabilizing. So um, obviously you spread out the, the, the soil and then you, you incorporate it you know, with, uh, with the existing soil, uh, folding it in with the, with the blade of the, of the grater as you see here. So you wanna spread it as even as possible. Keep in mind that the soil underneath has already been scarified, so it's, it's open, scarified and, and, and the tiller went uh, through as well. So that soil is already open. It's going to allow for the ladder rig to mix in. Now, this is uh, these are the totes of the K31 APS soil stabilizer. We always recommend that you stir them really well, as you see uh, uh, Raimundo doing in this uh, uh, video. Because remember, you know, it's manufactured in the U.S. By the time it gets to the destination, it may be weeks, you know, sitting in a container. So it, it could always. It, you're dealing with polymers, you know, uh, it, it, it always tends to settle in the bottom a little bit. So before you pump it into the water truck, um, you want to make sure that you stir it well. Um, you have two options to incorporate uh, the APS with the water. You could either uh, do it with a water pump, as you see here. Just make sure you wash the water pump after you do that. Or you can lift it with a forklift. The toes has a valve on the bottom. You can just pour it into the water truck. Uh, to do the stabilization, you want to do a, a mix of uh, one part APS to six parts water. Then you can see the, the, the spray bar. You can even use PVC, it doesn't have to be anything 
too professional. Um, just, you know, adapt a, a PVC pipe and drill some holes on it and you're good to go. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. So you start spraying the, the APS. Um, as you can see, most of it is being uh, sucked into the soil. That's why we do a one to six. So you do a couple of runs back and forth. Um, you want to calculate uh, one liter of APS uh, concentrate per square meter. So you do your calculations before uh, mixing it with the, with the water. Then you spray it and then, you, as you can see here, you follow it with the, with the tiller to, to mix it into the soil. Keep in mind, like what I said before, this uh, road has been prepped. In other words, the, the soil is already mixed, it's open, uh, it's ready for stabilization. So the stabilization is what you see here. Basically, you spray the chemical into the soil and then uh, follow it uh, with the tiller mixing. So as you can see, this, this only takes, uh, I don't know, on a two kilometer road, maybe you know, 30, 40 minutes. The preparation could take a day, a day and a half. Um, the main thing you want to keep in mind is get a consistent mix. Um, don't assume that, oh, I run it one time and that's about it. If you do that, you're going to get a lot of uh, uh, dry spots that uh, they didn't get wet. Also, you can, you can pretty much, uh, um, on a two kilometer road, it's not a big project, so you can follow the water truck and see if any parts miss. And you can always uh, touch those up using a jerry can, uh, not, a, not a big deal, uh, just a spray can. See it here, we're going on the second run and you're pretty much going over yourself to make sure that you didn't miss any, any spots. That's, you know, hence the, the, the one part APS to, to six part water. So you have enough uh, juice in the, in the water truck to be able to do this. See, now you're seeing, if you notice, the APS is not getting as sucked in, into the soil as fast as you, as you saw before because you already have uh, uh, one, you know, one pass with the, with the water truck. And again, you follow with the, with the tiller. The tiller is not only going to mix the, the, the soil with the APS, but it, it also it will keep shipping and grinding, shipping and grinding, making the, the soil particles uh, smaller and smaller and that uh, what that'll do is when it times when it comes time to, to roll and compact you, you will have a very nice and even surface versus not using a tiller you can you can do it with a with a with a blade of the motor grader but you're never gonna get that fine uh, crushed um, uh, soil that you get with a tiller so when you go with a with the roller, you're gonna have a lot of bumps and then you, you will have to do a lot of corrections with the motor grader after. By doing it this way, you pretty much eliminate even having to, to come back with the, with the motor grader. Okay, what you see here, you're always gonna have some spots that are corner in or they're in a difficult spot, uh, uh, a difficult uh, location. If you notice here, it's, it's like a small space here to the left uh, of this building. And it's difficult for the machines to get in there, especially the motor grader needs a lot of space to, to, to turn. So what you do is you do it by hand. What they're doing here is removing the larger stones. You don't want those huge stones when, you, when you're stabilizing. Uh, and also a lot of debris, if you notice on the surface. Now here, notice what I was telling you before. Since the tiller already passed a few times, you see how, how nice and smooth the, the soil is? So the, the roller, all it's doing is ironing the soil. I mean, you, you, you facilitate the, the job by a hundred, you know, if, if you do your, your prep work uh, uh, correctly. Before you run the roller, um, just grab a, a handful of soil in your hand and press it to make sure that you're not uh, um, over, over saturated with water or liquid. Um, it's always better to be oversaturated than underwater because oversaturated all you do is maybe pass the tiller one or two more times to aerate the soil and let it dry or just let it dry for an hour or two. If you're too dry then it's a problem so I say it's always better to be a little bit over wet than, than be um, uh, dried in, in the soil. So here you can see the rollers it's not even vibrating this is the you want to do a couple of times just rolling it and then after that maybe five six times with a full compaction 
um, you want to reach about 97, 98%. This year is already the following day. The, the road has uh, uh, dried. Now we're starting to do what is uh, the seal coat. And what this is going to do is going to act as a running surface, uh, protecting the, the, the road base that you just finished stabilizing the day before. If you notice, the day before when, we, when, when the truck first started spraying, all the APH was just being sucked in. Now, most of it is staying on the surface. Keep in mind, this is only the first coat. You're going to be doing three coats this way. Um, you'll be using a half a liter of concentrate uh, APS per square meter of, uh, um, of road when you're sealing the road. So you're gonna mix, you're gonna calculate that into three passes. So you're gonna do 0 0.5 liters per square meter divided by three. Your mix with the water is gonna be one part water to, it could be nine or 10 parts, um, I'm sorry, one part APS to nine or 10 parts water. So you don't wanna make it too thick and you don't want to make it one only, one seal coat only because what will happen is, remember, this is an acrylic coat polymer and it'll get, it'll solidify on the surface and then it'll be sticky and it'll take forever to, to dry. Plus, it won't be able to penetrate into the, into the soil to, to create that protection. You want this APS to, to go in there into the small crevices in the soil and then seal. Uh, this will make your road uh, waterproof. Uh, dust, dust proof, erosion proof, and this will make this is what makes the road last for many years. Again, as I explained before, if the uh, water truck misses a spot, you can always do it. This is a jerry can. You can always do it with a jerry can. You can do this on the seal part, uh, and you can also do it when it's uh, stabilized. Now, this is um, um, I don't remember if it's the next day or the same day in the afternoon. I think it's the next day. Um, you want to make sure that between each seal coat, the, the, the road is dry. Just touch it with your hand and, and you'll be able to tell. You don't need any scientific equipment. If you notice here, now when the water truck is spraying the APS, everything is running to the side because you already have one seal coat on there. So the, the road right now is, is, is basically what you put. You put a, a coat of uh, plastic on it. You know? uh, Again, this is what's gonna protect your road from, from, from the rain, from, from the traffic driving on the road. Um, make sure you don't go fast with, uh, control your, the operator for the water truck, because if you go too fast, then you're gonna start getting a lot of bold spots, and those are gonna become your weak points <clears throat> later. Um, and that's just gonna, you know, give you headaches in, in the future, you know, uh, that's where you're gonna get your potholes or, uh, you know, spots that are going to be eroded. You see how slow he's going, and now you want this fluid, uh, white milky. If you notice now, it's not even going in. Everything is staying on the surface. Don't worry. If you see the the the, the, the pass on the on the on the left side of the of the water truck, it's already beginning to 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 get absorbed. But it'll be absorbed at a much much uh, slower pace. Don't. Don't worry, if you see a lot of it is going to the side, you can always uh, 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 broom it back in, you know, using a, a, a broom, a brush. And this is the final and third coat. Again, remember that you, you need to let it dry uh, fully before um, uh, doing these, uh, these seal coats. Between each seal coat, the road needs to be dry full. Just taking a, a sip of water, I've been talking straight for 14 minutes, so I hope you can excuse me. All right, so <clears throat> now the truck is coming again and spraying the APS. This is the final coat. After this coat uh, dries completely, then it, it, it depends on the weather if you know if it's too humid it may take a day um, but if it's sunny and it's relatively uh, uh, dried out um, even even the if you do the, the the seal coat in the morning even in the afternoon you can open the road for traffic um, to be on the safe side uh, uh, you know we always encourage you know if you go if you do it let's say on a Monday morning 
try to open the road, you know, maybe Tuesday by 10 or 11 because you want to give a chance uh, for the sun, you know, to, to dry the road for the entire day and as, you know, as much as you can of, of the next morning. Uh, you just want to make sure that uh, that your road is, is tight and sealed and you're not going to have any, any problems, or, or especially if if the, the seal coat is not fully dry, you don't want it sticking to the tires of the of the cars or the trucks. And then it's the same thing that will happen to, to asphalt if it's uh, if it's wet. You know, it'll stick to the tires of the, of the vehicles and it'll get peeled off. And then again, you start getting uh, uh, weak spots that are going to give you uh, uh, problems in the future. That's where you get your potholes and and all these uh, the problems that you will have. All right, so this is already, um, I think it's like three or four days after the job was finished. So here we're running the, the, a pickup truck and doing about, I don't know, 90, 100 uh, kilometers an hour. Uh, if you notice, there's no dust whatsoever being uh, brought up on this road. And there goes the truck. That's a, a full size uh, Dodge truck. Um, remember here, the, the mess that we had before, everything is, is, is nice and finished already. Now, this we don't recommend doing after three or four days, but just for the purpose of the video, we're doing a, a, a water test, just, you know, throwing some water on the roads. It looks like dirt, but look at his hand. You see, nothing sticks. The road is solid. And we got a lot of questions, how's traction? You don't have any problems with traction because you can't see it in the video, but a lot of the smaller stones act as, as your uh, adhesive to, to, to the tire, you see? 100% waterproof, you don't have any issues with this, and there's no problem with the traction, so you're okay with the traction. And here, that part where the truck is, it, it hasn't been treated with the APS. That's the original side of the, of the, of the other side of the compound. Now watch how much dust he develops as he comes from the road. That's how the whole road was before. Now it goes on the APS side that we stabilized. Look at this. Not even a, a speck of dust. Okay, that's K31 APS soil stabilizer. This is the same day after we finished doing the, the, the water test and the, the driving test and the dust control test. You know, for, for you guys to. to review um, this is a 40 ton truck already driving on it if you notice there's no dust there's no problem this this road is um, it's an access road for a winery so all the tr all the traffic that you get here is uh, 40 and 60 ton trucks like, like the one you see here and man I mean you can see that I mean the, the, the product works we've been doing it for 10 years you never had any issues with it if you follow proper protocol and and you do your job right, you'll be okay to go. So thank you for watching. See you again.